Hello people, in this video let us look at optic neuritis. So basically this is a disease of the optic nerve and it is an inflammatory lesion. So that is why you will see neuritis right, of the uh, optic nerve. So inflammation of the optic nerve. So optic nerve is the second cranial nerve, isn't it? So here you can see behind the eye, here you can see the optic nerve. Correct? So all this retina and all. See, going into the optic nerve, feeding the information to whom? To the brain. So why does this get inflamed? So why does this optic neuritis happen? Why is this inflammation happening? The inflammation and demyelinating disorders of optic nerve, both they are including here. So you can see here, optic neuritis includes inflammatory and demyelinating disorders of the optic nerve. So let us check here the etiology. Etiology is idiopathic. So they don't know why it happens. Unidentifiable, uh, the cause is unidentifiable. Hereditary optic neuritis, that is Leber's disease. Hereditary itself, these people have some optic neuritis. Demyelinating disorders is the main cause. Okay, this is what you have to write here. This is the main one. Then why don't they put it here? So it is the most common cause of optic neuritis. So let's put it first itself. So it is the most common, they are saying, cause of optic neuritis. So here, what and all demyelinating disorders means multiple sclerosis. You should write neuromyelitis optica, that is Devic's disease. Right, Devic's disease. Then you have diffuse periaxial encephalitis of Schilder. Okay. So guys, now we have looked at the etiology, the main one, most common one, body myelinating disorders. Can you say multiple sclerosis? Multiple. Multiple. Sclerosis. Sclerosis. Very good. Then you have neuromyelitis. Neuromyelitis. Optica. Optica. This is also called as Devic's disease, okay? Devic's disease. Yeah. And uh, diffuse? Diffuse. Periaxial? Periaxial. Encephalitis? Encephalitis. Of Schilder? Of Schilder. Okay, so these are the important causes of optic neuritis. Uh, then guys, there can be infectious optic neuritis. So it could be infectious, para-infectious optic neuritis. Para means what? Around or beside something like that beside infectious uh, uh, optic neuritis so viral infections like measles mumps chicken pox whooping cough glandular fever all these can cause optic neuritis so nerves usually are affected by vi virus you remember all this right following immunization also it can happen so that is something strange right even after immunization people can have an optic neuritis and that is called as para infectious optic neuritis or something else then coming to infectious optic neuritis Sinus related guys, uh, because of uh, acute ethmoiditis or associated with cat scratch fever, syphilis, tuberculosis, Lyme's disease, cryptococcal meningitis in patients with AIDS etc. So infections you should know. So infectious what will you say guys because of sinusitis, sinus related okay. Sinus related acute ethmoiditis remember. So from the sinuses it has come. Ethmoid sinus means where is it? See here they are showing you the ethmoid air sinus. These these are the ethmoid air sinus. So from there looks like the optic nerve got affected. Kind of makes sense, right? Or it can be associated with cat scratch fever, syphilis, syphilis, tuberculosis. All this you can explain, guys. Tuberculosis, syphilis, standard things that you will write. Lyme's disease, cryptococcal meningitis in patients with AIDS. Then you have optic disorders associated with ne optic neuritis. Auto, sorry, autoimmune disorders associated with optic neuritis. So here you can say sarcoidosis, systemic lupus erythematosus, sarcoidosis, systemic lupus erythematosus, polyarteritis nodosa. So look at these guys. Autoimmune means standard you will write SLE, sarcoidosis, polyarteritis nodosa, Gullian Barr syndrome, vaginous granulomatous granulomatosis. We have seen a video on vaginas. Let's look at this. See this vaginous granulomatosis. Earlier it was called like this. But now they are calling it, uh, calling it as granulomatosis with polyangitis. Right. So here what and all they are saying in eye. How, what can it be affecting? Pseudo tumors it can cause conjunctivitis. But what you know now is optic neuritis also it can cause. Then guys you have toxic um, optic neuritis. So they are saying toxic amblyopia etc. So guys, in this they are blaming tobacco, ethyl alcohol, methyl alcohol, quinine, ethambutol, etc. So people talk, uh, what, what are we looking at? Optic neuritis, we have looked at the causes. What and all did you see in the causes guys? Blame almost everything on earth. They are blaming uh, autoimmune diseases. They are blaming main, what did they 
blame demyelinating diseases like multiple sclerosis, then some Devix disease, then Schilder something. Then they blamed idiopathic, they don't know why. Then they said it could be hereditary. So in Leber's disease, it could be hereditary. People are getting this optic neuritis. Para-infectious optic neuritis, like after immunization, viral infections and all that. Of infectious, they are blaming tuberculosis, uh, syphilis, then even sinus, sinus related, acute ethmoiditis. Then autoimmune, they, you should mention sarcoidosis, SLE, polyarthritis nodosa, Gullian Barr syndrome and vaginous granulomatosis. Toxic, they are blaming what and all, tobacco amblyopia, ethyl alcohol amblyopia, methyl alcohol amblyopia, quinine, ethambutol, etc. Okay. Now we are done with the etiology of optic neuritis. Let's move on to the clinical profile. So guys, in this clinical profiles, they are actually saying anatomical types. You have papillitis, re neuroretinitis, retrobulbar neuritis. So what are these types? So we, it's more like types, we can say anatomical types. So anatomical types, you have papillitis, neuroretinitis, retrobulbar neuritis. Let's look at this. In papillitis, the optic disc is inflammatory. Okay, same thing, exactly what you saw now. Uh, involvement of the optic disc in inflammatory and demyelinating disorders. And this can be unilateral or bilateral. Coming to retroneuritis, what are, what are they saying? Combined involvement of optic disc and surrounding retina. So it makes sense, right? So here optic disc and retina are affected. And which retina? That is surrounding retina they are seeing. Here what is affected? Optic disc in papillitis. Retrobulbar neuritis ca characterized by involvement of the optic nerve behind the eyeball. So it is not the optic disc. See, very careful here. They are not using the word optic disc here. It is the optic nerve behind the eyeball. So exactly if this, what are you looking at? Here you are looking at the disc, right? Here you are looking at the disc. So it is not the disc, but it is something behind the disc in retrobulbar neuritis. Guys, there is yet another terminology called as typical versus atypical neuritis. Let us look at this uh, terminology now. What are we looking at? Types of optic neuritis. Now we are looking at typical versus atypical optical neuritis. Traditionally, the term typical optic neuritis refers to the one associated with demyelination, particularly multiple sclerosis. And uh, so this is the typical one what you have studied now. Demyelination it is associated with. What is atypical optic neuritis? It is not associated with demyelination. Okay. So for uh, uh, multiple sclerosis, you will write typical, typical optic neuritis. Okay. Now let's move on to clinical features. So what these, what will be the features if your optic nerve is optic disc or opt, uh, optic nerve behind the disc is inflamed, what will be the symptoms? What do you think? So these people definitely, <coughs> so these people will have visual loss guys. So this visual loss is, uh, what is this? Monocular sudden progressive and profound visual loss is the hallmark of acute optic neuritis. Sudden they will have, that means acute, yeah, you can understand. M profound visual loss, it's more like very, a lot of visual loss these people will have, profound. So here these these words are very important, monocular, etc. Okay, then let's move on to dark adaptation. It may be less. Then coming to visual obscuration in bright light, a typical symptom of acute optic neuritis. What is this? Visual obscuration in bright light. So in bright light they cannot see, is it? Who helps us see in the bright light? The cones. So you cannot see. So that is why color vision also got impaired. Okay, impairment of color vision. Then this is always present, they are saying. It is always present. Impairment of color vision is always present in optic neuritis. Patients in, um, typically the patients observe reduced, reduced vividness of saturated colors. Okay. So they will not see red very well. So this is important. Then movement phosphines and sound induced phosphines may be perceived by patients with optic neuritis. Phosphines refers to glowing sensations produced by non-photopic or the so-called inadequate stimuli. So basically phosphines means what? Glowing sensation. First let us understand that. Phosphines means glowing sensation. So the, when movement phosphines and sound induced phosphines may be perceived. So these people will have some glowing sensations. And that too, these will be produced by <clears throat> non-photopic or non-photic, non-photic or inadequate stimuli. How is it going people? We are looking at optic neuritis uh, symptoms, right? So, look at this. UHTH of symptom, Uthoff's symptom, something like that, Uthoff's symptom. So, here, sim what are they saying here? Episodic transient obscuration of vision. 
so when uh, on exertion or in on exposure to heat so they will have episodic or transient obscuration of vision but when they are resting or they move away from heat they will have recovery so when is this in heat in heat etc they will have obscuration of vision then we have one more phenomena here pulfritz phenomena pulfritz phenomena means depth perception is impaired you cannot understand the depth of the object in front of you you don't know the depth of it so i can say this window in front of me is this at this much distance so they cannot see the depth of it something like that then pain pain is more you know this pain is actually aggravated by ocular movement so they have mild, mild dull uh, eye ache okay mild dull eye ache mild dull eye ache and there is more pain by ocular movements it's very important so we are done with the symptoms in clinical features we are done with the symptoms of optic neuritis guys uh, what are the symptoms the patient will complain of can you see now so let us say this optic nerve is inflamed so what and all will have to him he will have um uh, visual loss obviously then dark adaptation is impaired visual obscuration to bright in bright light in bright light he can't see that well glowing sensation that phosphenes phosphenes refer to glowing sensations that too they are produced by non photopic or so called inadequate stimuli episodic transient obscuration of vision when in when they are exposed to heat or they are exerted they will have episodic transient obscuration of vision this is called as eutops symptom then you have depth perception which is impaired that is called as yes can you say the word pulfritz phenomena can you say pull fritz 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 pull fritz phenomena can you say depth depth not depth baby depth depth perception okay then pain pain will be aggravated by ocular movements okay so now let us move on to the signs as a doctor what will you see in a person who has optic neuritis so definitely visual acuity is reduced this you already know vision, vision is affected color vision is affected you know Uh, from the symptoms it is itself you know all that now marcus gunn pupil will be there that is uh, relative afferent pupillary defect rapd so pupil will show ill sustained constriction to light so uh, so it will not constrict when you put light especially they will do the swinging flashlight test see this is marcus gunn pupil guys see when they put the light it is not constricting it's kind of positive rapd of right eye okay this is the marcus gunn pupil then ophthalmologic examination what will you see the ophthalmologic features papillitis what will you see in papillitis the disc will be hyperemic blurring of margins you should be able to see are you able to see that blurring of margins blurring of margins of the optic disc papillitis is characterized by hyperemia of the disc and blurring of margin this becomes edematous this is very important right that is why it is optic neuritis the physiologic cup is obliterated so the cup is obliterated retinal veins are congested tortuous splinter hemorrhages you can see fine exudates you can see on the disc where will you see fine exudates you can see on the disc and slit lamp examination may reveal inflammatory cells in the vitreous so you can have inflammatory cells in the vitreous inflammatory signs may also be present in the surrounding retina so even retina surrounding retina can be affected if it is associated with macular star formation so where is macula here right so here you have the macula associated with all the retina then what is it called guys it will be called as neuroretinitis you have already seen in the anatomical types we already saw if optic disc is involved papillitis if optic disc and surrounding retina is involved then it will become neuroretinitis okay here they are talking about macular star formation so guys did you understand here this is as a sign you are seeing you are trying to observe what and all is happening and you saw that in the ophthalmologic features you saw the disc is edematous the margins are uh, what is the irregular isn't it what are the what is the word they are using blurring of margins then the physiologic cup is obliterated retinal veins congested tortuous splinter hemorrhages fine exudates on the disc itself right all this they spoke about what will happen if um, retina surrounding is involved neuroretinitis now what is retrobulbar neuritis see in retrobulbar neuritis it is behind the disc the optic nerve is inflamed so in retrobulbar neuritis you will not see any change in the fundus fundus will look normal okay 
retrobulbar neuritis fundus will appear normal so here retrobulbar neuritis see the fundus is appearing normal but the patient is having defective vision so that is why they are saying the patient will, is not able to see doctor is also not able to see anything so that is why they have defined this as neither the ophthalmologist nor the patient sees anything okay guys so just summarizing see papillitis you will see disc becomes edematous margins blurred cup is obliterated splinter hemorrhages fine exudates on disc inflammatory cells in vitreous neuroretinitis optic disc changes plus retina affected macula star formation retrobulbar neuritis fundus will appear normal so patient doesn't see anything doctor also doesn't see anything okay then let's move on guys we are done with the uh, ophthalmoscopic features <clears throat> let's just add here visual acuity we have seen visual field also will have changes so visual acuity means what that's nellen's chart and all that near vision far vision that is visual acuity visual field will be more like those uh, central centrosecal scotoma so these people can have what central centrosecal scotoma that is in the center they cannot see see this this is central scotoma centrosecal means it will involve the blind spot also so central centrosecal scotoma so where will you see this in optic neuritis that means in all uh, they are talking about papillitis neuroretinitis retrobulbar neuritis okay so that is the visual field change central centrosecal scotoma that we have added here then contrast sensitivity these people's contrast sensitivity has reduced see this is contrast sensitivity they are checking then visually evoked response ver shows reduced amplitude and delay in transmission time so this is visually evoked response they are trying to depict so this one what is happening ver what is happening to ver reduced amplitude and delay in transmission time so let's write that down so yes we are done with visually evoked response we are done with this so it will show reduced amplitude and delay in transmission time the other one is fundus fluorocin angiography there can be mild to moderate leak okay remember mild to moderate leak initially and then it can increase okay mild to moderate leak in early phase and then increases mild to moderate leak in early phase okay and then it can go on increasing okay guys we are done with the signs of optic neuritis now let's move on to the differential diagnosis so papillitis you should be able to differentiate it from papilledema where there will be raised intraocular uh, intracranial pressure also right ischemic optic neuropathy you should be able to differentiate it from that anterior orbital compressive neuropathy compressive then pseudo papilledema pseudo papilledema comes in some drusen of optic disc usually children they are seeing okay guys then uh, acute uh, retrobulbar neuritis you should differentiate it from malingering they might be lying because they may say that they don't see right then hysterical blindness hysterical blindness means guys um, psychoneurosis commonly commonly this is seen in attention seeking personalities especially women so you should again uh, be able to differentiate this they will say it is um, uh, sudden bilateral loss of vision It's attention seeking people then cortical blindness what is cortical blindness cortical blindness guys this is visual cortex disease visual cortex means what in the brain bilateral occipital lobe lesions so this is because of occipital lobe lesions so looks like everything is fine except the occipital lobe so these people you may think it is retrobulbar neuritis but actually they will have occipital lobe lesions hysterical is an attention seekers attention attention seekers okay indirect optic neuropathy what is indirect this is more like guys some indirect cause for uh, optic nerve effect we are done with the differential diagnosis of optic neuritis let's move on now to eval what is this evolution evolution recovery complication so in evolution what they are saying your visual acuity and color vision is lost progressively over 2 to 5 days so they are progressively they are losing visual acuity and color vision and then what happens in recovery so visual recovery is slow so visual recovery is slower than the loss and what they are saying this starts within 2 weeks and it may take up to 4 to 6 weeks about 70 to 90% cases good visual recovery they get recover interesting then what are the complications 
So the optic atrophy can happen, the optic nerve degeneration can happen, complete blindness. You have seen that in optic uh, atrophy video, remember? So primary optic atrophy because of disc problem, right? Whereas uh, you have uh, post neuritic after papillitis, long standing papillitis, you can have secondary optic neuri uh, secondary, secondary optic atrophy, guys, after papillitis. This is what you have to understand. Now let's move on to treatment, guys. So we have looked at the complications, then let us move on to treatment. Treatment, you'll have to treat the cause. So what are the causes that you saw? Let's go back to that and just see again. So we saw that it could be because of hereditary, how will you fix that? Demyelinating disorders like multiple sclerosis, Devix disease, Schilder, then infectious optic neuritis because of bacteria, syphilis, tuberculosis, viral, autoimmune disorders and toxic amblyopia, ethyl alcohol, tobacco, all this you'll have to fix. Yeah. This is the treatment of the cause, guys. Then let us talk about corticosteroid therapy. Alone, they don't want to give or a prednisolone. But if the brain MRI confirms multiple sclerosis, they want to give intravenous methyl prednisolone along with oral prednisolone. So oral prednisolone, they are not giving alone. right? They are giving it in combination with methyl prednisolone, that is uh, intravenous, so IVMP. <coughs> so then they are also talking about intravenous dexamethasone. In many studies, they are talking about intravenous dexamethasone also. Now, if the brain scan, uh, brain MRI is normal, then they are suggesting IV methyl prednisolone. If some conditions like both loss, both eyes loss is there or slow progressive loss, things like that, they are talking about IV methyl prednisolone. Then they are also talking about interferon therapy, reduce recurrence in patients with multiple sclerosis, so to reduce the recurrence. And this is also very expensive, okay, expensive. And what does it do? It reduces recurrence the occurrence okay and that too in multiple sclerosis patients multiple sclerosis so remember multiple sclerosis is the main cause right for uh, this so let's take a recap guys in this video we have started looking at optic neuritis inflammation of optic nerve right so this is coming under diseases of optic nerve inflammatory disease optic neuritis includes inflammatory and demyelinating disorders of the optic nerve so they are talking about inflammatory and demyelinating disorders guys of the optic nerve. So, what is the cause of the inflammation of optic nerve? Demyelinating disorders like multiple sclerosis, neuromyelitis optica or Devix disease, diffuse periaxial encephalitis of Schilder. Okay, so these are the three demyelinating disorders that you should know. Main things you will write. Then it is it could be idiopathic, you don't know why. Hereditary it can happen, Leber's disease, para-infectious optic neuritis, blame all the virus, mumps, measles, chickenpox, woofing cough, glandular fever, and even following immunization. Infectious, you will blame some bacteria uh, like tuberculosis, syphilis, etc. You can also blame some other things like sinus uh, related like uh, acute ethmoiditis, uh, cat scratch fever, etc. Cryptococcal meningitis in patients with AIDS, etc. Then autoimmune also can cause optic neuritis like in people with sarcoidosis, SLE, post, uh, most polyarthritis, nodosa, gullian barr syndrome, vaginal spangulomatosis, etc. Toxic optic neuritis can happen in top. The tobacco amblyopia, ethyl alcohol amblyopia, methyl alcohol amblyopia, quinine amblyopia, and ethanol amblyopia. Oh. So we looked at some types also like papillitis where the optic disc is affected or neuroretinitis where optic disc and surrounding retina is affected. There you will see macular star formation. Retrobulbar neuritis where you will, uh, the problem is behind the optic disc, right? So the optic nerve behind the eyeball. Then you have typical versus atypical uh, optic neuritis. Typical means it is associated with demyelination like optic uh, multiple sclerosis. Atypical means other than uh, demyelination, some other things. Typical means remember multiple sclerosis. Most of this video will talk about um, uh, multiple sclerosis itself. Then uh, let us look at the symptoms. So these people will have visual loss, monocular, sudden progressive, profound loss of vision. They will have dark adaptation, less visual obscuration and bright light, impairment of color vision. They cannot see red very well. Horse means glowing sensation. Uh, Uthoff's uh, uh, symptom that is in heat they have uh, transient obscuration of vision and heat and stressing right in heat they cannot see when they are exhausted like that they cannot see pull rich phenomena where depth perception is impaired and uh, they can have pain mild dull eye ache main, more pain will be there when they have ocular movement now as a doctor as what signs will you see you will see that visual acuity is uh, reduced, visual field changes are there, central and centrosecal scotoma, contrast sensitivity, color vision, Marcus Gunn pupil you will see, ophthalmic, uh, ophthalmoscopic features you will see, papillitis what will you see, discus, edematis, margins are blurred, cup is um, obliterated, splinter hemorrhages you can see, fine exudates uh, on disc and you in the uh, vitreous also you can see some inflammatory cells. In neuroretinitis you will see some macular star formation. Retrobulbar neuritis, the disc will be perfectly fine. 
because uh, the problem is behind the optic disc right then visually evoked response amplitude will be reduced there will be delay fundus fluorescein angiography uh, you will see some leaks okay so these are the signs then what else the differential diagnosis you should be able to differentiate papillitis from papilloedema ischemic optic neuropathy uh, anterior orbital compressive neuropathy pap pseudo papilledema drusens uh, in that you will see this acute retrobulbar neuritis you should be able to differentiate if people are lying hysterical blindness in attention seekers cortical blindness in occipital lobe lesions indirect optic neuropathy okay then uh, evolution progressively their visual acuity color vision loss is happening recovery is slower than the loss but uh, recovery happens okay and 70 to 90% cases get good recovery okay then a uh, complications it can lead to optic atrophy we saw primary uh, secondary right primary secondary secondary is what post neuritic yes optic atrophy complete blindness because you remember in this we, uh, in the symptoms we only spoke about the central uh, or centrocecal scotoma but in complication they are saying it can go into complete blindness then we saw the treatment guys you have to treat the cause uh, then they talked about corticosteroid therapy if it is multiple sclerosis then you can give methylprednisolone remember mm multiple sclerosis methylprednisolone iv methylprednisolone along with uh, you can also give oral pre uh, prednisolone but oral prednisolone alone they will never give then if um, there is brain mri doesn't say that it is multiple sclerosis they are preferring the iv methylprednisolone okay yeah both the places same thing only iv methylprednisolone what is different but here they are not adding that oral okay let's make the same color it's the same thing right interferon interferons are expensive but they can reduce the recurrence in multiple sclerosis okay guys so that's it in this video on uh, optic neuritis hope you have understood optic neuritis papillitis neuroretinitis and retrobulbar neuritis bye, bye.